So I'm Richard Dynan, um, and I left school around 16. Uh, I went and set up several companies, some of which went well, some of which didn't go so well. Firstly, there's the word nuclear, yeah. uh, and people think that they associate that with nasty, explosives, worst things we've ever done. Um, and that power is really when Einstein discovered the, the power locked up inside an atom, the strong force, the strong, it's called the strong force, it's the strongest force that we've ever really witnessed. And humans being humans, we took that force and we raced to make a bomb out of it. And the, the way you make a bomb is you take the heaviest possible atoms, like uranium, and you enrich them to the point where they literally leak particles and uh, they, they become very unstable. And you can use that to create a chain reaction, which is the bomb. Uh, and uh, Einstein said it was something that he wished he could almost uninvent. And it was unquestionably probably the worst thing we've ever invented. Um, on the other side of that, same power is getting very light elements and making them heavier, which is what the sun does. And that's fusion. ITER will give us a really powerful fusion burn. Uh, it's completed in about two years from now. It's got 35 nations backing it, so it's a multi-government um, uh, reactor. It's in France, and it is a star. And it's a man-made star on Earth that we will turn on in a few years' time, and it will give us a more powerful energy reaction than we have than anything ever achieved by man. And that's pretty incredible considering most people don't know about it. You need a lot of money to create a vacuum that size on Earth. And um, it's a sort of, it is the, the fruits of a century of research coming together. Uh, and so that is probably, that will be the, 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 the most advanced reactor. England still has the best nuclear physicists in the world. If you wanted to build a fusion power station or a fusion reactor, and you wanted to find the best talent pool, it would be England. And that is because the Cullum Center for Fusion Energy is here. And it's where all the, the European scientists working on ITER were, uh, and, and our, our facilities are at JET and MAST, which has recently set a world record in fusion, is all in the UK. And again, most people don't know that. Why, why is Jeff Bezos an American trillionaire investing his money into UK fusion projects, not because he's trying to give us a pat on the back, it's because we are the best at it. The other big promise that fusion give us, gives us, apart from the ability to power our planet forever cleanly, it gives us the ability to leave our solar system. It means that we're not just that species that if a planet humans um, we ultimately just start to <laughs> destroy all, all that planet's resources and, um, and then maybe blow ourselves up, which is what some people think that, you know, it, it's difficult because if we're so alone in space, we can't see, we can't take the data of another hundred planets that have humans because of the size of space. So we don't know what our future is, but what we can tell by, if we can do fusion, it means we can power our planet cleanly forever, and it means that we can actually leave our solar system. Because the speed that rocket engines, you know, that use fire, combustion rocket engines, will never give us the speed to leave our solar system. So Pulsar knows that we can actually build fusion rocket engines well before anybody can build a fusion power station. Because we don't need that infrastructure. We don't need to breed our own fuels. We don't need the steam turbine. We don't need to capture our neutron, our kinetic energy from the neutrons. We don't need any of that. So if you can do fusion, you can do propulsion before you can do energy, is the bet of, of Pulsar. And that's why Pulsar is a nuclear fusion propulsion company. People are asked, why would you put, do fusion in space? Isn't it hard enough on Earth? And actually, the answer is, it would be a lot easier. It is a lot easier to do fusion in space. Space is an, it's a vacuum. And on top of that, it's minus 235 degrees. So it's perfect for superconductors and it's the perfect place to do fusion. It's where the stars are ultimately anyway. Doing fusion on Earth is really hard. 
But we have to be able to get our future. If we want to build a fusion rocket, we have to be able to get it into space. And unfortunately, fusion reactors won't work in the atmosphere. They only work in space. A fusion rocket will only work in space. So we have to develop here the rocket technology to, to lift our fusion reactor into orbit. And once you're in space, you then turn off your combustion rockets, your the rockets that most people are used to with fires coming out the back of them. And as you get into the vacuum of space, we then turn on our fusion rocket. We can switch into fusion drive, if you like. Um, so Pulsar builds fusion reactors on Earth, and then it launches them into space to give us the particle speeds, which are a thousand times more than an ion thruster or a wall effect thruster. Nuclear is using, again, that strong force, the most powerful force that we've ever seen. It's a completely different force being used to, to, to propel particles. And it would give us the ability to produce a thousand times the, the exhaust speeds of a, of a plasma engine, which is, by the way, extremely quick. And one, we also build plasma engines here. Um, it means that emission to Mars would be reduced by half, which is pretty exciting because uh, you could get to Mars in like two weeks. Um, in theory, we, could, we think we can get about 350 kilometers a second. The other thing that is worth thinking about is beyond our solar system. So that the, the further you go, the more benefit you get from fusion. So Mars is, okay, maybe a first stop, but there is a three planet system, a three star system outside our solar system called Alpha Centauri, about 4.2 light years away from Earth. Now that is absolutely, you're never ever going to be able to get there. Um, using uh, a, con a, con a conventional, we're not going to get there by saying fire to things. Just, it would take many, many, many human lifetimes to put someone on a ship and send them to, I mean, hundreds of human lifetimes to send them to Alpha Centauri. But a fusion engine get us there in 11 years. Now, that may sound like an awfully long time to spend on a rocket engine, but it does mean that we could actually visit another solar system well within a human lifetime. Uh, and that fusion is the only technology that could do that. You don't want to send really, really heavy things into space, and also um, it, it's it's much more efficient for us to actually assemble a fusion reactor in space. Um, so our plan is to build first a, a fusion rocket on Earth um, and test it here in a, a facility like this, where it's uh, we can put all the computers up to it and make sure it's doing the right thing. And then we would use rockets like the ones behind me to launch it into space in three different pieces. And once those three pieces are in space, they can then navigate using plasma thrusters like the ones we built here as well, so that they can come together and assemble in orbit. And then we can turn on our rocket engine. And we want to do that by 2027. So we want to build one here on Earth, test it 2023, 2024, and then we will put it in space in three different pieces. In the Milky Way, it's believed to be about 2.2 billion habitable planets orbiting G-type stars like ours. Now, that doesn't mean that they've got people in them, but it means that they could support life. And we're living in a world now where maybe the entrepreneurs of the future can own their own planets. Uh, to do that, they need very, very, very fast rocket engines. You know, that may sound like a ludicrous thing to say, but we're almost, we're almost there. Um, you know, I think Mars has already got quite a keen... Uh, uh, contender for it and as these engines accelerate we will be able to leave now a lot of people say why why would we focus on that when we need to focus on the problems in our own planet well fusion does address the problem in our own planet but that I believe once I saw that a fusion reaction work that it is part of what you know if, I, if we human I think part of that is to leave our planet I think that's part of who we are and what we are. And I think if we innovate and we follow the stars, you know, we've always followed the stars for direction in the prehistoric times. Now we need to emulate them. What I can say is that if it's not me, we'll do it. Because that reaction of fusion means that we will leave our solar system. So if we will, 
and we don't destroy ourselves in the next couple of weeks, <laughs> uh, then, you know, is it my ambition to claim a planet? You know, the interesting thing about money is um, money is developed for a planet where everybody is living on one planet. Because it, it almost means we have to be at rest relative to each other to be able to enjoy that money. If my grandchildren can fire off a, a good percentage of the speed of light towards another planet, then they're going to actually devalue my currency. They, they can't take money with them because money doesn't, it, it actually encourages us to remain at rest relative to each other. So we almost need a, an interplanetary currency. Because if everybody starts jetting off in meaningful distances, we've got relativity to deal with. You know, suddenly you're, as you push the accelerator, everybody in the on Earth is probably going to die very quickly because of the effect of relativity. And your bank balance isn't going to, you know, you can't ring up your bank manager because he's dead. So uh, my point being, what is a commodity that we could trade in in space in this future world? Well, one is possibly planets. Because the further you travel away from Earth, the more realistic those planets become and the more value they obtain. Because one day they actually might, you, could, you know, you might be able to say, I've got, I own this many planets. And as the tech, as you know, technology increases, they will become more accessible. And as our, and you know, so suddenly those planets nearest to us become more valuable. And then as the technology moves on again, it's say, start accelerating off into space and the technology moves quickly relative to Earth, if you understand special relativity, all of this is. But effectively, if we move very quickly on Earth, then time becomes a real problem. But anyway, it means that suddenly technology is moving on your side and those planets that you might own in your portfolio of planets are going to increase in value the more you travel, which is interesting. So maybe in future, people will trade interplanetary real estate uh, in the form of planets. 